Hey everyone, welcome back to Homegrown Passion. Today's video I've been waiting to do for a long time, well not a long time, a couple weeks, is uh, putting up my betel buckets. Got my tomato plant started, had 100% germination, but we had to get another project done before I could do the betel buckets because you know we have this nice big area over here and we had this ground cover that we've had for a couple years and finally got it cut and we're going to put it underneath all of my channels because you know when I harvest, and you guys all know too, leaves always fall off and I get uh, leaves, dead leaves underneath the channels and I want to be able to keep everything nice and clean. So we got that done first, So, but today we're going to go over putting all the drain lines in, putting the buckets in, the elbows, filling them up with the grown medium and planting them. So I'm going to go over step by step of how we get that done. So the first thing I got to do, like always, is crawl underneath here and get our drain lines that we cleaned up a few weeks back and get these guys hooked up. I think right now we're just going to set up one side of the system to get started. So that's what we're going to go through just this side today. Now the inside of these guys got clean, but not the outside. So I'm going to wipe them off real quick here. So it's almost like putting a puzzle together, making sure you get the right pieces to go on the right side. There's Doug putting in the rubber boots for me to put the pipes back together. And then down at the end, you want to make sure you put a cap down there in the end because otherwise water will squirt out when it waters. So we have some little black caps that Doug put a hole in to let the air in, keep the water from squirting out in the end. So that's getting the drain lines put up. And like I said before, these are all drained to waste. And we do drain the waste because these are long-term plants that are in here and I don't want to recirculate the nutrient water for them. I don't want to get any pathogens in there. So with the tomatoes, it's a lot easier to do the drain to waste. And so we have a drain out the back of the greenhouse, out to our receptacles out that way. So it goes all the way down through there. And that's how our setup is for this. So here's my washing mess. Usually I do a marathon where I wash all the beta buckets in one day and usually kill myself because it's you know scrubbing and trying to get everything done. This year, since I knew I had some time, I'm soaking four buckets at a time and then I'm able just to rinse them out with my hose here and then spray a little bleach on them, rinse them out again and they're all sanitized. So over these few days, I've just been doing about eight to 12 buckets every day, just soaking them and it's so much easier. of betel buckets that we have here and we're just going to start with these first two and they each have 20 betel buckets in each each one of these drain lines here the other side has 22 it's a little bit longer and I'm rearranging a little bit this year I always used to do tomatoes on both of these sides here and when you get over to this side you know you got the big tomato plants all growing here and you got this you can't get a cart down here to harvest it's a really pain in the butt so this year I'm gonna put my cucumbers over here because they're a lot easier to harvest. You can go in the middle here and you can reach through and get them and go on the other side, it's a lot easier. So I'm gonna have the tomatoes here so you can go up and down both sides and then I'm gonna do the tomatoes on the other side. Same idea, you have the middle aisle and be able to go up and down. And then I'll probably do green beans and some uh, peppers against the plastic over there because that's always a pain to go against the plastic, especially in the morning when it gets dewy out and the humidity's higher here in the greenhouse and you rub up against it and you get all wet. So I'm just trying to make it a little bit easier here. So one of the reasons I'm rearranging with the uh, plastic over there, um, what I usually have planted, which was always the cucumbers, is that you don't really get good airflow against the side wall there. So I'm gonna put something that's a little bit airier, like the green beans and the pepper plants I wanna do, because they let a lot more air flow through in there and I won't get any of the pathogens or any bugs can hide out there. So when we first got the betel bucket system here, we bought it from Crop King, like bought the whole package here. These were already pre-drilled and everybody always wants to know how far apart the buckets are. So let's see here. These guys are 16 inches um, from center to center of the holes. 
And then when you put the buckets in, they're staggered back and forth. And I'll show you real quick. Let me grab two buckets here and I'll start up here at the top. I call the top, maybe the back. So you put one bucket in one way and you put the other bucket in the opposite way because if I can get that guy in the hole, there we go. Because you want to make sure the plants have enough area to grow. They produce so much better and produce so much more fruit if they have room to expand. So you want to stagger your buckets back and forth. If, you, you know, if that's what your system is. You know, there's a lot of different ways to do homegrown stuff and in your own greenhouses, but with the crop team system, going back and forth seems to work really well. last time that I was at Crop King, they have a new, uh, like a gutter system for their Beto buckets. They're not using this pipe anymore because it's like you saw earlier videos that gets clogged with uh, roots. So I'll try to get a picture of that and put it in here in the videos so you can see what their new system looks like. So as you can see here, we have our feed lines. We rolled these up last fall or earlier in the fall when we were cleaning up. Rolled them up really nice and carefully here, have them tied up and we made sure that all the stakes and all the uh, tees are still in place. We usually get two or three years out of these before they get clogged up really bad. So this will be our second year, so I'm confident in using them again. We'll just have to watch when we fill up the uh, growing medium and get everything wet, just to make sure each one of these uh, stakes is uh, putting enough water into the beto bucket. So I have all the beto buckets in place here on the drain line. And one thing I forgot to mention about our drain line, if you want to drain the waste, you got to make sure you're on a slope. And our whole greenhouse, I forget what the percentage of the slope is, from the top, from the front there, slopes all the way down to the back because of the NFT system with my recirculating system and my nutrient tanks all the way in the back there. So everything slopes that way. So that's why my drain the waste is on, you know, goes this way and slopes down to the back. Now I'm going to put the elbows in. The two 90s you put together, you see they have two different ends and they go in together. And the way the system is made is you put this elbow in, you know, you see how you have the little um, step here? The reason why to put these in is to keep the vermiculite from draining out of your bucket into your drain lines. So this sits on the bottom of the bucket, and you can see it's got little um, not notches here to let the water come up through so it doesn't get too much water in the bucket, then it keeps the growing medium inside the bucket. So there's a place to insert those, and you just kind of snap them in place. So you see here inside the bucket, you've got the little half moon thing here that the bigger part of the elbow sits on that has the notches. So you set that in there and put the other part into the drain and it keeps all your growing medium inside your bucket. So these bobbins have been up for two years. I am going to take all these down and soak them and sanitize them and use them probably out in the high tunnel if I do anything out there. But I did buy all new bobbins this year for in here because we tried this um, different kind of twine last year and it was supposed to hold a couple hundred pounds and many times I'd come out here and my tomatoes would be on the ground. So I want to get rid of these and just start all brand new fresh ones. So you're probably wondering what the cost of the bobbins are. I think they're only 50 cents each and that's with the uh, twine on them. So for me it's economical to replace them all this year. Well as you guys can tell I have different clothes on. It's not sunny out anymore. But we started this project yesterday. The sun was so bright. It was so nice on. I kind of like bailed on this project and went outside and went for a walk in the woods to enjoy the farm. So now I'm back at it in here. Luckily it's misty and raining out so I won't, you know, jump out of here and do something else <laughs> like I like to do. So what I have to do now is put the growing medium in here. So I got all the buckets in here, got all the elbows arranged, ready to go. And I know most people just use straight perlite. I like to do a little bit of a, a layering situation with it. So I put the perlite down first. And then I do another layer of vermiculite because that kind of holds the moisture and I found for us it works pretty good because otherwise the tomato plants in the heat of the summer will start drying out unless they have something that's holding the moisture in. I know I have the timer and all that stuff on but it's just like an extra added buffer there so they don't get dried out and get wimpy. So I'm going to go ahead and open these up. I'm going to put a mask on because it does get dusty in here and I'm probably going to turn my one fa uh, um, exhaust fan on to pull any of the um, dust out of here. So I'm just going to go through down here and put them all in and I'm estimating that I'm going to use four bags and what are they four cubic feet of perlite for this uh, section of 40 buckets and then two bags 
of four cubic feet of, of vermiculite for here. So let's see if my calculations are correct. So I'm pretty lucky I have a nice mass like this. Doug used to have a mold remediation company about 10 years ago, and he saved some of the cartridges and the half mass. And so I use this whenever I'm doing anything that has a lot of dust here in the greenhouse. Kind of look like a bug, but you know what? It's better than coughing up dust. Okay, so I got the fan going, got my mask here, got my knife foot over up the bags. So once I put my mask back on, you won't be able to hear me talk, so you're just gonna watch me and see what I do. I got all the beta buckets filled up with my perlite vermiculite mixture. I was pretty close on my calculations. Remember I had the uh, four bags of perlite and two bags of vermiculite. So I used three and three quarters bags of perlite and just one bag of vermiculite to fill up all 20 buckets. That's pretty good. So the next thing I'm going to do is um, get my hose and water these all down because you want to make sure they're thoroughly soaked through before you start planting your plants in there. So I'll get those soaked real good. Then Doug's going to take down the uh, nutrient lines and get all the emitters in and get that all buttoned up. He likes to use zip ties to the bucket so they all stay in place for the year for me. And then I'm going to plant the plants and we'll get the lights on for tonight. Pretty exciting. So Doug got my emitter lines in for me. He has them all zip tied to the beta buckets. So now I'm ready to plant my tomatoes. Look how good these guys look. So if you remember, I put them in the um, rapid rooters. And look how nice. Look at the roots on these guys. So we'll get these guys planted into the beta buckets. So in years past, these guys have gotten too big and leggy and fallen over. So this year I'm getting them in when they're nice and straight so I don't have to lay them down. And it's just a matter of opening up a little hole in the growing medium here and sticking them on in. I always like to do them opposite corners. They seem to grow better that way. And I think it's easier for Doug to lean and lower them. Isn't this the coolest thing? Look at these roots hanging down. It's just amazing to me. So as you're planting these guys, another thing you've got to remember is the uh, root system isn't that big in here, so it's not all the way through the growing medium, the perlite. Look at that root down in there. So you want to make sure you put the emitter right next to the rapid rooter, but you don't want to put it inside the rapid rooter because you don't want to hurt the roots. So get this guy down in there, get all the roots covered up, Put the emitter right next to it and he'll grow good and I see him dropping perlite on the floor, which I always do. So after I get done planting everybody with all this perlite on the floor, I'm going to bring my HEPA vac in here and vacuum this all up because I like to keep it nice and neat to begin with and it's a lot easier to keep it neat as you, the growing season goes on. So in years past, I've used the styrofoam covers that are made for the beta buckets here. You got a hole here for the plant and you got a hole for the emitter. But when you plant them new, you always have to put the emitter next to them like I was showing you over there. So I'm not going to use these this year because last year I ended up spraying the top of the uh, perlite mixture with Zerotol 2.0 and that really kept the algae out. So instead of using more stuff, I'm going to just go ahead and spray these again with a Zerotol to keep the algae down. So Doug's going to put a link to the bottom about the Zerotol. Another thing Doug is going to do for me, he's going to take all these bobbins down 
and put all the new ones up I was talking about before. So that's his job for the day. Since we got the betel buckets done, now I get to do something I've been meaning to do for a little while here is get my spinach planted. You see it's a little big here, but it's ready to go into the channels. And you can see I started already and there's a few that didn't sprout, but that always happens. And what I'm doing this year, because um, I only have one plant in each one of the cubes, is I'm putting two cubes in each hole just to save space. And they grow really well if they're uh, two or three in a uh, channel together. So I'm just going to put these guys in together, get all the roots down in there. Oh, this guy's got three, so it'll still work. And get these guys planted. So the germination process works pretty good. You can see how well success I had here with these guys. So got quite a few more to go. A little bit more than I wanted to do this year, but I'll put it up in the freezer and it'll be good for the winter. So this is where I'm going to end the video. I'm going to plant the rest of these tomatoes in here. And we'll have another video showing you about getting the bobbins and getting these guys hooked up and about putting the cucumbers in and getting them hooked up to the bobbins and how you want to get them straight to grow up and all the fun stuff that we do here to train the plants so it's a lot easier to harvest and a lot easier for Doug to lean and lower these things. So, And Doug, at the end of this video, is going to put a little bit of footage of um, my last Crop King class I just did today. Really good group of people asked a lot of questions, so he's going to put some footage up of that of the questions that were asked. And I know some of you people have been to Grower School, and if you haven't been, it's a really good thing to go to. So, like always, leave me any questions, comments, and suggestions down below, and we'll see you guys next video. So, I'm Katie Kern. I'm from Bradwood Farm. I'm a local grower here, and I started out like you guys here at Grower School in 2013, and I've been growing ever since. And I had no experience, didn't know anything about hydroponics, didn't know anything about agriculture. My whole background was banking and doing the books for my husband's construction business, so that's all I did. So I couldn't even grow a garden in the dirt. I always had to, weeds and everything. So came to grower school, learned about it, and we decided to jump in both feet and build the greenhouse. And it took us about a year and a half to build the whole thing. And once we got going, I had a lot of, um, I didn't want to go out and try selling a product unless I knew I could grow it. And so I started out just growing a bunch of bib lettuce and had hundreds and hundreds of heads of it. I used to take up to second harvest of Lorraine for the local food bank. 